Am I wrong for telling my sister her rainbow baby isn't special? I, 27 female, have a set of twins, Ben and Betty. They just turned six. My sister, 32 female, has Connor, who is four. My sister and her husband lost their first baby due to SIDS. It was devastating for the whole family and I was behind my sister 100% of the way. I couldn't imagine what it was like. Anyway, when she found out she was pregnant with Connor, we were all excited. The pregnancy went well and Connor got a good bill of health. I love my sister and I love my nephew, but my sister is convinced that because he's her rainbow baby, that that means he can do whatever he wants. Connor is incredibly spoiled and a brat. He throws fits to get his way, hits, kicks, cries, whatever it takes. My sister and her husband give him no discipline. He's their rainbow baby, so that is their excuse for his bad behavior. Their lives are to serve for whatever Connor wants. My twins just turned six and we had a small party for them. Everyone was having a good time except for Connor. He wanted cake, didn't like the games, wanted to watch TV, wanted ice cream now, didn't want other kids to touch him, and etc. Basically, the whole party, Connor threw a tantrum. The final straw came at present time. My husband went to get the gifts out of the living room only to find Connor had ripped nearly all of them open. My sister made excuses saying he was just excited and wanted to play with my kids' new toys. I lost it. I told her that Connor isn't special, that he's a brat and he's been ruining the party since he got here. My sister immediately went on that he's her rainbow baby and he didn't mean it and maybe I should have put the presents where he couldn't get to them. They were in the living room and the party was outside. No one was inside. I lost my temper. I know I did. This was my kid's party though. I said some nasty things to her. I told her that Connor isn't a baby anymore and he's not special and she's raising a self-centered brat who will grow up to be a self-centered adult. She left the party and then my parents called. They said they understood my frustrations and everything about the situation. Then they said they still feel like I should apologize to my sister. Why? Because I have two healthy kids while she lost one and she's still having to deal with it? I told them no, my sister should apologize for how her son acted at the party. My husband and the guests who were at the party are on my side. My sister hasn't really spoken to me in a few days, just posted passive aggressive things on social media, which I just blocked. Am I wrong for kicking my brother out for announcing his wife's pregnancy right after I announced my daughter had cancer? Just to make sure I represent both sides of the conflict, my brother and his wife suffered from not having kids for years. It impacted them greatly. They love the kids in the family but always wish to have kids of their own. Lately, we got busy with my daughter Megan who is 12 with health problems. She started suffering from anemia, loss of appetite, and reoccurring fevers. We've taken her to the pediatrician and from there we've learned that she has cancer. It was so devastating, I didn't want to tell my family right away. Most of them have chronic conditions and this type of news might trigger a negative reaction because they love Megan and would give everything to see her healthy. My husband and I decided to gather the family at my house this past Wednesday to announce Megan's diagnosis. My aunt didn't take it well because she holds Megan dear so she was rightfully the most devastated one. After a few minutes of complete silence, my brother started moving in his seat saying there's something very serious he wanted to tell everyone. He was hesitant but then he and his wife stood up and then he said that they found out that they were finally expecting. The family were conflicted. Some got up to congratulate them and some remained seated. I remained seated and my brother then approached me and expressed how sorry he was that they had to tell us in these circumstances, but said he couldn't wait since this is a huge deal for them after years of waiting and because everyone was present. Literally everyone was there since I said the announcement we wanted to make concerned Megan. I argued with him about how he thought this was an appropriate time and asked if Megan mattered to him at all since he didn't take a minute to realize she was just diagnosed with cancer. He started reminding me how many years he and his wife suffered from frustration and disappointment for not being able to have kids and argued that because he wasn't able to be a father until now, he's 37, he felt he was missing out on so much for many years and that I didn't have to finally tell him congratulations but should at least not guilt him for feeling overwhelmed and excited to finally be a father. He said I knew exactly how much he adores Megan and I shouldn't even think otherwise. Then said he was just sharing good news after hearing the bad news and there was nothing wrong with that. I told him and his wife to leave the house right then. He said he won't argue anymore because of how tense I felt but will expect me to apologize at some point. Some family agreed with me but my parents thought I shouldn't have taken my anger out on him like that and that he'll always remember my reaction to the news he gave and should apologize after I've calmed down. Am I wrong for taking my friend to court after she kicked me out of the bridal party for cutting my hair? For my friend's three-day wedding, I had to buy three different dresses, including alterations and specific shoes which totaled over $700. She also wanted specific hairstyles for each day. Unfortunately, starting in March, my hair started to deteriorate. Due to health reasons, my hair was falling out in chunks and in May, I made the difficult decision to cut my hair. I told the bride about my decision two weeks before the wedding and she didn't say anything bad. The following week, she came over to my house and when she was about to leave, she brought up that she was concerned about my haircut and I told her it would look good even though I wouldn't be in uniform with the other bridesmaids. The following day, I received this message. After our recent conversations, I'd like to remind you of my boundaries. I've been very accommodating and graceful, but I cannot allow you to disrespect me. As you know, my wedding has been something I've dreamt of for many years. My husband and I have invested a lot of money into the video and photos of this day and as we reflect on this day in the future, we want to see our vision reflected in the memories. 
Since I asked each of you to be my bridesmaids in 2019, I've been very clearly and very communicative in my request. The timing of your decision to cut your hair and not income in advance is very upsetting to me. I would have felt respected if you had communicated with me more than a week prior to the wedding, so we could have worked together to find a collaborative solution. Your inconsistencies have concerned me, and while I sympathize with your health conditions, I'm not willing to compromise my vision to accommodate you, or anyone else, when you have informed me in advance and we could have found a better solution. Since this is something you can no longer fully commit to, I need you to please step down from participating in my wedding. This was three days before the wedding. I immediately sent her and her husband an invoice asking them to reimburse for the dresses and shoes, keeping in mind that one of the dresses is still in her possession even though I paid for it. I was told I was inconsistent and selfish after I spent the past two weeks helping her plan the wedding shower. I worked with another bridesmaid to surprise her with a bridal shower after our bachelorette trip had to be canceled. I spent hours helping her out with wedding details. When she asked me to help her tone up before the wedding, I sent her a personalized workout program and even went with her to the gym to show her the ropes. When I agreed to be her bridesmaid, I was more than willing to oblige with what she asked even if at times it was a lot of time and money. So am I wrong for taking her to court because she kicked me out for cutting my hair? Story time about how I'm hooking up with my boss's husband. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. It was sending me on Instagram. Let's get this out of the way. Yes, I'm a homewrecker. Am I proud of it? No, but just hear me out. A few years ago, I had moved to a new city and didn't have any friends at all. My goal was to get a job and make some new friends. Luckily, I got a job right away. After working there for a few weeks, I noticed that my boss would get really jealous anytime her husband would come into the store. Here's the reason why. Her husband is super attractive. He's like way more attractive than she is. Anyway, there were a bunch of girls that worked at the store. I wasn't the only one, but it was like some kind of unspoken rule that you never spoke to the boss's husband. After a month of working there, I would avoid him at all cost. But here's the thing. He actually would go out of his way to come say hi to me. At first, I thought this was flattering, but then I realized I could be playing with fire. So I decided to be really cold towards him. Well, this didn't work because it actually made him want to talk to me even more. A few days later, I get a text from an unknown number. Can you guess who it is? Yep, it's my boss's husband. In the message, he basically said that if he had done anything wrong to let him know because he didn't want me to feel uncomfortable around him. That's when I told him that none of the girls at the store were allowed to talk to him or even make eye contact with him. And that was the reason why I didn't speak to him. He told me that I must have misunderstood because he's friends with all of the girls who work there, which I knew was not true. The next day I go into work and he actually shows up at lunchtime. I was by myself at the store. It's like he almost knew that I was there by myself, so he decided to come over. And he started flirting. He pretty much complimented everything about me and asked me if I was making friends. Then he asked me for permission to follow me on Instagram. Of course, I was like, yeah, you can follow me. After that, we basically talked on Instagram almost every single day. He would watch and reply to all of my stories. One time I posted a story of me having dinner with some guy and he replied right away and asked me if I was on a date. I said yes. Then he told me that he was actually jealous. I didn't know how to reply, so I just said LOL. Then he said, what are we going to do about this? I told him probably nothing because his wife would get upset. Then he said, I've got my ways, don't worry. He asked me to go to the movies and we went. And we basically made out the entire time. After the movie, we sat in his car and he told me that he hated his wife and that he was planning on divorcing her. He was even crying. I mean, I had to believe him. He asked me to keep everything secret and of course I said yes. I mean, I didn't want to lose my job. This went on for two months. One day he calls me and tells me that his wife actually read our messages part two is up my boss's husband aka the guy i'm having an affair with he calls me up to tell me that she actually saw the text messages between us disclaimers is not my story time it was sent to me on instagram i repeat this is not my story time luckily he did not save my number under my name so basically she saw messages between him and some other girl he was really freaking out but that's when I told him this is your way out. According to him, he hated his wife. So I told him this is perfect, just ask her for a divorce. That's when he told me there was no way he would ever divorce her. He told me that she was the only one who made money in the relationship and that if they ever got divorced, she would leave him nothing. He also told me that he was no longer attracted to her but that the money was just too good and he had to stay in the relationship. At that point, I started feeling really bad. I was under the impression that he absolutely hated her and that she was terrible towards him, but apparently not. Thankfully, she didn't know it was me the one that was messaging him. He actually made up a lie and told her it was some girl from Instagram that he met. When I showed up to work later that day, my boss was in a really bad mood and I knew why. Suddenly, she tells all of us girls to pull out our phones and open our text messages. My stomach dropped because stupid me had not deleted all the messages. 
She started going one by one checking everyone's phone. But luckily, I was able to delete everything by the time she got to mine. That's when she told us all to go home. As soon as I got in my car, I decided to call him. I told him what had happened and he told me that everything should be under control and that she believes what he said. He asked me if we could meet up and I said yes. I just couldn't resist the temptation. A few days later, I came into work early by mistake. I find him talking to one of the other girls. When he saw me, he literally backed away from her. I instantly got upset and realized that he had probably been having a fair with a bunch of the other girls. I decided to confront the girl that he was talking to and she told me the truth. They had been having an affair for a year now and that he had probably had affairs with all the girls that worked there. No wonder my boss was so paranoid. When I asked him about it, he totally denied it. I kind of want to tell my boss now and just confess everything, but I'd risk losing my job, which pays really well and I actually love. I'm hoping you guys can tell me what to do. Help me. As much as it pains me to say this, before my daughter turned 17, I didn't feel any love for her. I didn't even like her, really. She certainly thought I did, but on the inside, I just couldn't feel anything but annoyance towards her. She was very manipulative and needy and needed constant attention. I know that this is a common feeling in parents, but I feel so ashamed to actually say it out loud. Two particularly traumatic instances for me were one, where I was going through an extremely tough time and she wasn't there for me. She never gave me support or comfort that I needed and there is no worse feeling than being betrayed by family. She was a teenager and old enough to know better. And two, there was a period when she was really pestering me to take her to a psychologist and one time I caught her forcing herself to throw up. I didn't know what to do and felt completely helpless. She's 18 now and lots better. She almost never complains about anything and is always there when I need a shoulder to cry on. My two older children were visiting last night and we were discussing family memories. And while we were joking, I mentioned in passing to her, you really fucked me up good. She asked what I meant and I told her about the two incidents I mentioned before. She got quiet and eventually said, you know, I really needed your help back then and you just wouldn't. I told her that I needed her help too, but she came back with, I'm your daughter. I told her, yes, and I'm your mother. What's your point? She ended up going home with her older sister and she won't return any of my calls. Her older sister called and told me that I had really hurt her last night and that I needed to apologize. I personally don't feel like I owe my daughter anything. She abused me her whole life. Am I the asshole for not wanting my fiance's parents to move in next door? My fiance and I live in a duplex that I inherited from my late aunt. My aunt was wheelchair bound, so her unit was renovated to be wheelchair accessible. The unit my fiancé and I live in do not have the same accommodations. My brother's partner is disabled and uses a wheelchair. While they're running a wheelchair-friendly apartment, their landlord has decided to raise the rent next year by a significant amount. It will put a serious strain on their finances. I told my brother they can move in my aunt's place when their lease is over. We agreed I would charge a token amount for rent and my brother would help me with maintenance. A few days ago, my fiancé told me that his father had been diagnosed with cancer. Am I the asshole for not wanting my fiancé's parents to move in next door? A few days ago, my fiancé told me that his father had been diagnosed with cancer. While thankfully it's not terminal, he does need to undergo chemo for a while. My fiancé asked me if his parents could move in next door since we live near the hospital and they currently live two hours away. I told my fiancé I was fine with his parents moving into our unit with us, but I'm not going back on my agreement with my brother and brother-in-law. He said this wasn't a feasible solution. He argued that my brother can wait another year or so to move in and his dad needs treatment soon. They can renew their lease and I can help them with rent. My in-laws are well off and can afford to rent a place that fits their needs.